Hello, Temple friends, and welcome to this 117th episode of TempleCast. I'm Jim Gennati, pastor of Temple United Methodist Church in North Coventry Township, Pennsylvania. Today we'll share readings and prayer for Wednesday, December 8th. As we head into another winter of global uncertainty and suffering, I thought it would be good to begin with this prayer for times of great sickness and mortality from the Book of Common Prayer. O most mighty and merciful God, in this time of grievous sickness, we flee to you for comfort. Deliver us, we beseech you, from our peril. Give strength and skill to all those who minister to the sick, prosper the means made use of for their cure, and grant that, perceiving how frail and uncertain our life is, we may apply our hearts unto that heavenly wisdom which leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Here is our first reading for today. It comes from Psalm 38, and we're going to hear verses 14 through 22. I have become like one who does not hear, and from whose mouth comes no defense. For in you, O Lord, have I fixed my hope. You will answer me, O Lord my God. For I said, Do not let them rejoice at my expense, those who gloat over me when my foot slips. Truly I am on the verge of failing, and my pain is always with me. I will confess my iniquity and be sorry for my sin. Those who are my enemies without cause are mighty, and many in number are those who wrongfully hate me. Those who repay evil for good slander me, because I follow the course that is right. O Lord, do not forsake me. Be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. And here is a prayer from St. Augustine's Prayer Book. Grant us patience, O Lord, to follow the road you have taken. Let our confidence not rest in our own understanding, but in your guiding hand. Let our desires not be for our own comfort, but for the joy of your kingdom. For your cross is our hope and our joy now and unto the day of eternity. Amen. Next, we're going to hear two readings from the prophet Amos. This first reading comes from Amos chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. Alas for those who are at ease in Zion, and for those who feel secure on Mount Samaria, the notables of the first of the nations, to whom the house of Israel resorts. Cross over to Kalna and see. From there go to Hamath the Great, then go down to Gath of the Philistines. Are you better than these kingdoms, or is your territory greater than their territory? O you that put far away the evil day, and bring near a reign of violence. Alas for those who lie on beds of ivory, and lounge on their couches, and eat lambs from the flock, and calves from the stall, who sing idle songs to the sound of the harp, and like David, improvise on instruments of music, who drink wine from bowls, and anoint themselves with the finest oils, but are not grieved over the ruin of Joseph. For they shall now be the first to go into exile, and the revelry of the loungers shall pass away. The Lord God has sworn by himself, says the Lord God of hosts. I abhor the pride of Jacob and hate his strongholds, and I will deliver up the city and all that is in it. Our second reading from Amos comes from chapter 8, verses 1 through 10. This is what the Lord God showed me, a basket of summer fruit. He said, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then the Lord said to me, The end has come upon my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The songs of the temple shall become wailings in that day, says the Lord God. The dead bodies shall be many, cast out in every place. Be silent. Hear this, you that trample on the needy, and bring to ruin the poor of the land, saying, When will the new moon be over, so that we may sell grain, and the Sabbath, so we may offer wheat for sale? We will make the ephah small and the shekel great, and practice deceit with false balances, buying the poor for silver, and the needy for a pair of sandals, and selling the sweepings of the wheat. 
The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their deeds. Shall not the land tremble on this account, and every one mourn who lives in it, and all of it rise like the Nile, and be tossed about and sink again like the Nile of Egypt? On that day, says the Lord God, I will make the sun go down at noon, and darken the earth in broad daylight. I will turn your feasts into mourning, and all your songs into lamentation. I will bring sackcloth on all loins, and baldness on every head. I will make it like the morning for an only son, and the end of it like a bitter day. Here is a prayer from the Book of Common Prayer. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And here is a reading from another Old Testament prophet, Habakkuk, from chapter 3, verses 17 through 19. Though the fig tree should not blossom, and there be no fruit on the vines, though the yield of the olive should fail, and the fields produce no food, though the flock should be cut off from the fold, and there be no cattle in the stalls, yet I will exult in the Lord. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, and he has made my feet like hinds feet, and makes me walk on my high places. Finally today, we'll hear from Paul's letter to the Christians in Philippi. This is Philippians 4, verses 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. And we'll close today with a hymn entitled, Sometimes a Light Surprises, which contains themes from the Habakkuk and Philippians passages we just heard. It was written by the 18th century poet, William Cowper. Sometimes a light surprises the Christian while he sings. It is the Lord who rises with healing in his wings. When comforts are declining, he grants the soul again a season of clear shining to cheer it after rain. In holy contemplation, we sweetly then pursue the theme of God's salvation and find it ever new. Set free from present sorrow, we cheerfully can say, E'en let the unknown morrow bring with it what it may. It can bring with it nothing, but he will bear us through. Who gives the lilies clothing will clothe his people too. Beneath the spreading heavens no creature but is fed, and he who feeds the ravens will give his children bread. Though vine nor fig tree, neither their wanted fruit shall bear, though all the fields should wither, nor flocks nor herds be there, yet God the same abiding, his praise shall tune my voice, for while in him confiding, I cannot but rejoice. Thank you for listening. Temple Church meets for worship every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. at the corner of Temple and Unionville Roads in North Coventry Township, Pennsylvania. Our services are live-streamed on our Facebook page, and our past services, along with all our podcast episodes, can be found there and on our YouTube channel. We will be back with you again in a week. Until then, grace and peace to all.